this week I show you how to make a super easy doormat for the front porch on your dollhouse. And this one can be easily made in any scale. So join me for this really simple and quick project. Alright, the first step in making our doormats is to turn this felt into something that more resembles the rubber of the doormats we're replicating. And we're going to use gesso. We've used gesso before. I know I used it when we made the um, remade the fabric chair into a leather chair. Same product. We're actually using two colors this time. Oops. We need the black gesso and we need regular white gesso. We need this because, number one, I want to turn this so it looks like the doormat I'm making is supposed to look like those rubber ones that have the design on the top. To turn this felt into black rubber, I need black gesso. This will soak through. The white gesso is simply to make a paintable primed surface on the top that's easier to paint. And I chose green felt just to show you it doesn't matter what color you use. You can use any color felt you have, whatever color is out there. I need to shake the gesso, and this is not going to be a real exciting part, so I'll show you part of it and then I'll come back when this is dry. But I like to put the black into a container and it looks like... Okay, we'll just pour it. And it's going to take a bit. It's going to take quite a bit, in fact. Because this, the idea is this is going to soak in. Use a pretty wide brush. Uh, wider than this would even be better. And just paint it on. But paint it on really thick. Really get it on there. So I'm going to pour it right there and spread it out. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this to pretty much... Oh, and I instantly I have it sitting on some aluminum foil. You want some kind of disposable surface under it. You see how it's, it's coming through? I want to really come through. I want lots of gesso. I want this to really, really saturate this felt. Um, the reason I'm doing it this way and not starting with a black felt is I want to make this... I want to change the texture of the felt. I don't want it to really be identifiable as this was a piece of felt. I want it to be, I want it to look like rubber. I want it to change texture. I want it to become more stiff and more rubber-like, I guess I would say. Now I'm going to do this side and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do a light coat on this side after this side dries. This side has to dry before I do anything else. So let me finish this, let me let it dry, because that's going to take a while. When it's completely dry, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so we're all, it's pretty much dry. There's a few wet spots, but not many. So the next step now, so we can move forward, is I will turn this over. We're going to do a coat of black gesso from the back side. You can see that it's pretty much coated all the way through. We only need to hit now these spots that are not black. Because everywhere that's black on the back, it's soaked all the way through. So I'm just going to go through and coat these spots and then let this dry. And then we can go on to the next step. Right, this is pretty much dry now. It's, there's still a few spots that are showing through, but that's alright. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we are going to take the white gesso, if I can get it open. And this one I definitely want to put in the dish. We need to have that black dry because we need to be able to brush this on without it mixing. And basically we're just going to paint this side, get a nice white layer so that we've got a good place to paint and let this dry and then we can move on to our next step. So I'll finish painting this and get it dry and then I'll be back. Alright, so the uh, gesso's all dry and it doesn't have to make a complete coat. That's fine. We just wanted to lighten it up a bit. Now whatever color you are going to use for the background color of 
your doormats. And I think I'm actually doing two batches. This one I'm going to do in a, this is just a sage green. It's a fairly pale color. And I'm just going to squirt some out. This color you'll need to get pretty even. So if the first coat doesn't coat evenly, then I'll go back and put a second coat on. And if you've got lumps in your paint, just brush them off to the side. Because we don't want that big gooey thing there. And it's okay if you don't go all the way at the edges. We're actually going to cut away the very edges. So this is why we start with an oversized piece of felt. I'll show you really quick when I get this spread out. Because if you look at the edge, our paint goes over the edge and you don't want that. So we're going to cut the very edges off. We don't want that showing on the back or on the side. So I'm going to paint the back of this one a light green and I'll paint my other piece. And when this paint gets dry, I'll be back and I'll show you what we do next. All right, for this step, I've moved out to where I do my sewing so that I've got room to set up my cutting equipment because I'm, I'm going to cut this just like I would if I was making a quilt. Now, not only do we have to cut this to size for our doormats, we need to cut off the edges because our edges, our paint goes, you know, kind of goes, soaks around and gets on the edge. So that kind of negates the uh, layered effect there. So first, I want to cut a nice clean edge. And I'm just using a rotary cutter that I use when I make quilts. And see how nice it cuts? It just slides right through there. And now we have a nice edge. The white shows up. It, it's more noticeable, I think, on camera, actually, than it is in real life. It's kind of a change. So I'm going to cut, I'll just cut two edges right now. And you would cut all the way around, cut off all four edges. So let me pause the camera and cut that, and then I'll be back. All right, all four edges are nicely cut off and nice and neat. So now it's time to cut our doormats to the size we want. I've chosen to use one and a half by two and a half as my measurement. So the first cut I'll make is I'll go out two and a half inches from the end, and I'll make that cut. Lining up my my marks on my ruler with the edge, making sure everything is straight. Okay. And you can make these any size you want. Um, I chose this size because it tends to work the best for dollhouse porches, but it's up to you. Now I'm going to cut this into one and a half inch pieces. And you could use a craft knife and a straight edge. You could use a pencil or a pencil, a pair of scissors after you mark your lines. However, you normally cut things is how you cut these. And I'm going to cut this sheet and also the sheet. I've got another sheet I painted brown for another batch of doormats. When I get these all cut up, I'll be back. Right. I've got them all cut. I think I got. 23 out of the brown one and 22 out of the green one. I, I messed up one when I was cutting. I mismeasured. But you can see out of a full sheet of felt, you can get a lot of these in 112 scale. Uh, check out the blog and I'll talk to you on there about how what to do if you want to do other than 112 scale. This is obviously a project that would be easy to make in any scale. Um, you can go bigger or smaller. The same exact technique will work for Barbie, one six scale. For other scales, I'll discuss that on the, um, the blog along with what sizes to make. So now it's time to decorate your, um, your doormats. There's a world of options out there. Uh, if you go shopping or go online and Google welcome mat images, there's so many. They come in all designs. Obviously, they come in other sizes too, so if you want a different size, Cut them the size you want to. If you don't know how to, to translate real size to scale size, look on my scale videos. So let me get some stuff out to paint a few, and I'll show you some options.
right, so the first one I'm going to show you how to decorate. I'm going to use this, the tan blanks I made. And what I've got is a rubber stamp. This rubber stamp says Happy Holidays on it. I think the camera's picking that up. I experimented a bit. I'm not a big rubber stamp person, but I do have quite a few that I've kind of collected lately. I found for this project a wet... Of the stamp pads I had, the ones that are really wet seem to work the best for this. Um, I had a little trouble finding appropriate stamps for what I wanted to say on these. I really wanted to say, find one that said welcome home, but I couldn't find one. So I've lined, this is one of those clear stamps. I lined it up on the block with the grid on it. I lined it up so I can line up my grid marks pretty much with my mat. And then you really have to press the bejeebers out of this thing. Really get it pressed in. And I slid a little bit on that one. So that one didn't turn out as well. Let's do that again. That's what I get for trying to talk and stamp at the same time. All right, try this again. This is why I made extras. Push down and really push down on it. And you get a decent looking stamp. It's not going to be a complete stamp, but it it definitely says Happy Holidays. It has a little bit of a worn look. And quite frankly, it's printed about the same as the real one I have outside my front door at Christmas time. So I'm really happy with this. I will clean this mess up and I'll show you another variation in just a minute. This one we're doing another stamp technique. And this time I'm using multiple stamps. I have this heart. And I thought this heart would be kind of cool. Again, I've marked this so that I know where the center of my stamp is, or my mat is. So I eyeball the center here and try to get that heart centered but low, but almost to the bottom. Then above it, I am going to stamp, trying to keep it straight, but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It's okay if this looks a little crooked. In fact, I think, in a way, it looks better if it's not perfect. There. We have a heart with home. So, really, it's up to your imagination. You can do any design you want. You can use rubber stamps. You could use, I just wrote the word welcome on this one. If you're good at painting, you can paint them. You could stencil. You could do some, some decoupage type techniques with Mod Podge. You can do whatever your heart desires. Uh, check out the blog and I'll give you some the dimensions for other sizes and some ideas of how to do other sizes. If you haven't checked us out on Facebook, be sure to do that. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.